continue. That's starting automatically now. I think that was an update that Zoom just did the other day. She is total fierce love and goes the distance to help you choose radical honesty and radical authenticity. Kali is the dark goddess and acts from the deepest love, clearing the path and helping us to let go. Kali means the dark one and Krishna is also known as the dark one. So this is just a little bit more about her. She is time itself and that which is beyond all time. She is the void and the womb. She is a place from which everything springs forth and the place which everything is absorbed within. She is the dark matter of the universe. She is the absolute emptiness and the darkness of the dark night. She is drenched in darkness. She is the absolute terror that <laughs> that's the most grotesque and horrifying presence of any form that something can take and get in the midst of that terror. And yet in the midst of that terror, she is the most exquisite form of love itself. I just realized how big my girl has gotten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who's that? Okay. So in my reading and listening about Kali, basically what she does, she represents, you know how we want to avoid parts of who we are or, or we're really steeped in ego and stuff like that. Kali get makes us go deep within and the darkest, darkest parts of the self and we only then, only when are we willing to do the work, will she show up? Not before. <laughs> only then will she do, will she show up? So it's like the heart must become the burial ground. And what it means is that anything that is not of the higher self, not, not anything that is not of the divine self must be burned away. And what's left will be the raw, most honest, purest version of you. And then Kali will come in. So... Her sword makes clean cuts. It is a sword of discernment, the sword of discrimination, the sword of truth, power, absolute truth, and liberation. She's got a blazing red third eye. She's got fangs in her teeth. You probably wouldn't have seen that from the picture. Her tongue is hanging out, dripping in blood. <laughs> and she yields all the weapons of the gods. Her favorites are her sword and her trident. And um, yeah, so that's what I'll say about Kali. You saw the visual. So I'm going to get into the myth. And it goes back to Durga. To Durga, she was, well, as you know, she came about to help slay the buffalo demon Mahisha. And ever since then, she's been doing her thing, slaying demons, you know, trying to make the rights in the world that were wrong. So a long time ago, long, long, long time ago, or maybe not so long ago, Yet again, Durga found herself in a situation. And this time she was faced with two, a twin demon called Chan Chanda and Munda. Yes, I think I got the names right. And they were wrecking everything, as they often do. And these demons, these twin demons, they're representative of anything that you might be dealing with in your own personal life, like pride and arrogance or greed and attachment. So that's what they represent. And she was trying to destroy them, but she just could not get them destroyed. And she grew exhausted. So Durga's like, okay, enough is enough. I, I need help. So she stood in her power. And out of that, she started to pull up all of the, for lack of a better word, power, or another word, the power of all of her practices, all of her, tap tapasya is the name for it, your yoga practices. She pulled it all the way up. And, start, and it started to con converge, if that's the right word, into the third eye. It's like everything comes out of this third eye. And she furled up her brow and out of that third eye, blasted the most fierce, grotesque, terrifying, horrifying version of the Mahadevi, Kali. Kali came out ready, as I said, blazing hair, red hair garlands of skulls, bracelets of severed arms of children, drenched in blood. <laughs> and she's got her sword, her mighty sword, the Vici, <laughs> like, like her expression. And she goes and chops off the two heads of the demons and gathers them up and takes them to Durga. Durga. And from that point, Durga was like, thank you so much, great goddess. And she named her Chamin. 
okay, Ch Chamunda, <laughs> because she was a slayer of this twin headed demon, of this twin demon. And I'll tell you one more story because I'd mentioned this, I've spoken to this before, so I'll actually tell you this story. So moving on from there, there is this demon called Raktabija. And he had a boon. And his boon was whenever a drop of his blood hits the earth, a thousand more versions of him are formed. Okay. Yeah, a thousand. <laughs> so he was like virtually impossible to kill. And what that represented, this fact that he had this generative power, that represents in our everyday life, the fact that we have, you know, when you get like a negative thought or feeling, and then a neg another negative thought comes and another negative thought comes and then you spiral, 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 and you go down this rabbit hole of negative thoughts and negative habits and stuff like that. This is representative of that, that generative power. So, but that has to stop because the more we go down that rabbit hole, the more we're moving away from our divinity. So he is out there, of course, doing the most as they always do. And Kali comes to the rescue. So Durga calls Kali up again. Kali comes out and she is excited. She is like filled with ecstasy. She cannot wait to go and take this demon down. And she gets her Vichy, her sword, and shoo, chops his head off. And before a single drop could hit the ground, she laps it all up. And he's destroyed, never to be seen again. There are other stories with Kali where she did this dance. and. Um, what happened was, I don't remember it clearly, but the bottom line was she, oh, Parvati, Parvati, you know what, let me not go down another story, but she does do this dance where she's like mad crazy and you had to bring her back to, I was going to say a sense of like um, calm and collectiveness, but I mean, hey, Kali's always like, Rawr. anyways, but to bring her back to that. So imagine her being the most terrifying form and then having a little bit of madness and insanity added into that. And the only way they were able to bring her back was to was um, there was one story where Shiva pretended to be a baby crying for his mom and hearing the cry is what pulled her back <laughs> into oh into the center let's say that pulled her back into the center yeah i know quickly i mean let me move along because i spent a bit longer on the stories than i had planned on whenever you're feeling for radical love and honesty or for transforming fear or for really connecting to your deep authentic self or facing your fears and shadow shadow work is important or disrupting destructive thoughts and patterns call on kali she'll help you cut through all of that her mantra is Klim, and she also has another one called Klim, which is a more um, radical, you know, fierce part of her. And Klim is the attractive energy, transformative power, divine desire, and prosperity of wealth, and, in, and it invokes a gentle, the gentle form of Kali. Her root mantra is Om, I'm, Hrim, Klim, Chamundaye, Viche, Swaha. And that invokes the great liberating forces and true freedom. Yeah, I, I have to practice that when I haven't, I've never actually known her root mantra before. This is the first time I've actually seen it and I've only, and, I heard, and, and having heard it. And you chant this when you want liberation and mental clarity and all the things in true freedom and to strengthen your protective energy and to help you face your fears. So Kali's all about that. Her mudra, Yoni Mudra. There are many, ver there are different versions of Yoni, but this is the one we're going to work with today. Just bring the thumb tips and the index fingers together, and that goes below the belly button on the lower part of the abdomen. Okay. And that is the seal of the goddess, the seal of inner source. It honors the divine origins of all beings. It represents the feminine energy of creation through the womb and invokes the sacred passageway of the feminine power. And it honors embodiment turn senses inward, enhances, enhances creative energy. Notice where it's placed, it's placed on the sacral. Um, Kali is associated with the sacral. And I believe the throat, the third eye and the, the crown chakra as well. So she's pretty fierce. So I'm gonna put y'all lovely ladies on mute and hopefully we'll get through this practice. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I remember what we're gonna do. There is a, like Saraswati, there is a pranayama that is associated with Kali, and we're going to do that in the practice. Okay, and I anticipate that I will probably, you may feel lightheaded after doing it, 
kind of like how I felt like headed last week after doing um the oops oh gosh what did we do last week oh right the Durga um the Durga thing Majiggy felt pretty like headed after that so that is a possibility so I'm wearing black because I didn't read anywhere that her specific colors are black, but because her skin is like midnight blue and um, she's known as the dark one, I felt wearing black plus sienna in the same mythic yoga flow that I referenced before, she was wearing black. So I chose to wear all black as well. Okay. Um. Jen, I'm going to disconnect to connect again because my um, thing is very bad, the screen. I'm not too sure. It's very delayed. So I'm going to um, join again. Okay. So come into a comfortable seated position. Holy crap, it's 820. <laughs> and bring your hands together. Thumbs touch, index touch, and come into Yoni Mudra. You may close your eyes to your level of comfort and take a few moments just to reflect on the download that I would have given you about calling and what, and just consider for a moment. Remember when we learn about the goddesses and the gods, there are aspects of them, the essences of them, I truly do believe, um, reside in each and every one of us. And it might be, it might make one uncomfortable initially to even consider that we could possibly be like Ali. But surely there are parts of you that can relate. You know, when you lost patience for nonsense and you want to get straight to the heart of the matter. That is what Kali is all about. She is about getting to the heart of the matter. Moving, getting rid of all of the outside noise, all of the outside influences and cutting straight through to the core. That is what she is about. And maybe that resonates with you, maybe it doesn't, but just sit with it for a few moments, breathing deeply in and out through your nose. Om Ain Krim Klim Chamudaye Biche Swaha. <laughs> Take one more full breath in. Exhale it out. And then inhale, take your arms up above your head, bring your palms to meet. And exhale, bring the hands into the heart. Make your way onto your hands and knees and take a few moments just to really, truly deeply connect with your breath. You can use your Ujjayi Pranayama and guiding yourself through a few rounds of cat and cow, making them your absolute own. Remembering that Pali, she is the one that's really about that fierce love and that heart energy. So really being truthful. She's all about liberation. What will liberate you in your practice today? And I think what would liberate you or what could liberate you is just being really truthful about where you are in your practice and your body, feeling into it, honoring it, and showing up as your truest, most authentic self. And if you don't know what that is, Pavi will help you figure it out. She will cut through all the noise and bring you back to yourself. Go ahead and make your way to downward facing dog. Head it up. Keep your tiger paws actively pressing into the claw into the mat. Go ahead and sweep your right leg up for three-legged dog. Bend your right knee and set the right foot through to the top of your mat. Round your back knee, pad it up if you need to. And come up. Bring the palms together. This is representative of the biche, cutting through all the BS. And shift back. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, shift back. 
Make sure you're pushing your front heel down into the mat as you shift back. And shift back down here and hold it for a moment. Spread the toes of your right foot. Move the inner thighs back. Hug into your center. And then inhale, reach up. Exhale, spin open to the right into a twist. Stay here with the arms at shoulder height. Or take the left, the left hand up as the right hand lowers to your back leg. Full breath in. Big breath out. Cartwheel your hands down to frame your front foot and step back into downward facing dog. Pedal it out again. Reestablish that connection of your hands into the earth. And go ahead now and sweep your left leg up. Step your left foot to the top of your mat. Right knee down. Hug your feet towards each other. Palms meet. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, shift it back. I want to make the sound effects with the sword. Inhale up. Exhale it back. Last one here. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale back and hold it here. Spread the toes. Push the heel down. Pull your feet towards each other. Lengthen the, the neck. Draw the chin back. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Inhale, rock it forward. Exhale, spin open to the left. Stay here or take the left hand back and the right arm up. Full breath in. Exhale, windmill the hands down and step back. Why? With the legs and walk your hands back. Let's get a functional forward fold in. Bend your knees slightly, hug your other shins in, roll your inner thighs back and away from each other. Shift your hips back to weight your heels. Stretch the arms long, big breath in. Exhale, squeeze in the middle area. Twice more, inhale. And exhale. Big, big, big breath in. Exhale completely. Walk your hands back in as you shift your weight back into the four corners of your feet. Move it into Parsva Uttanasana. So walk, I'll go to the left first. So walk your upper body over to the left. Bring your left hand wider than your mat up on your fingertips. And take your right hand to hold on to the outside of your left shin. Take a full breath in here, or maybe the ankle, and exhale. Bend your right elbow as you pull yourself over to look underneath your left armpit. Draw the right shoulder back or up away from the ears. One more full breath in and out here. And after exhalation, inhale, come back to center. And exhale, make your way over to the right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, release heel toe your feet back to hips distance. And walk out to a plank. When you get into your plank, look straight down between the thumbs, hold it here, pull the navel in, and then go ahead and walk your feet towards your hands. Bend your knees, round your feet, and slowly come on up to stand. Take the arms all the way around the neck, bring your palms to me, and exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Step back to face the long side of your mat, toes out, heels in. So this is the Kali um, Pranayama that I was telling you about. So basically, you're going to bring the hands together. You're going to inhale, 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 and then you exhale. Inhale, 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 inhale. inhale. And you can speed it up. Inhale. Inhale. Keep going. Three more.
Last one. Nice and slow. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, hold it here. You can interlace the fingers, wrap the left thumb over the right, release the index, stretch it up. Ooh, Tata Bodhi Mudra. Hold it here, pull the navel in, breathe deeply. And then inhale, come back up. Exhale, release, step back to the front of your mat. One round of fearless heart namaskar. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, bend your knees, turn your hips and lower into Uttanasana. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale, left foot steps back. Normally, yes, you do it with the knees down, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Inhale, rise up. Exhale into downward dog. Inhale into your plank, knees down or not. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale into bhujangasana. Exhale, downward dog. Left leg sweeps up. Go ahead and step your left foot through to the top of your mat. Rest your right knee if you're working with that option. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, step forward into your forward fold. Fold in deeply. Inhale, lengthen it out. Exhale, fold. Round your feet. Inhale, rise up. Exhale it into the heart. Let's go again. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale to the floor. Inhale, lengthen it out. Exhale, big step back with your right foot, rest your knee. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale into your plank. Exhale into Chakaranga. Inhale into Bhushangasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Right leg sweeps up. Step your right foot through. Left knee rests. Inhale, reach up. Anjali Asana. Exhale, step forward. Uttanasana. Inhale into the art of form of Uttanasana. And then fold once again. Inhale, rise all the way up. Bring the palms to meet. And exhale, bring it into the heart. Pause here for a moment. Yoni Mudra. Om, I'm, three. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm getting that right. I'd be impressed. I am right. Awesome. Om, I'm, Green Clean, Chamudaye, Viche, Swaha. Twice more. Om, I'm, Green Clean, <laughs> Chamudaye, Viche, Swaha. Om, I'm, Green Clean, Chamudaye, Viche, Swaha. Inhale, reach it up. Right hand to left wrist, Yana Mudra. Gently draw yourself to the right. Inhale back through center switch. Take it up and over it to the left. We'll do that again and add a little bit of rotation. Big breath and reach it up and exhale. As you come over to the right, start to spin your left shoulder to come forward. Get a stretch a little bit more down to the side of your back. Inhale back through center, second side, and switch. Come back to center, big breath and circle the arms around and exhale into your forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step back into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha. Right leg sweeps up, bend the knee, roll the hip open. Come up super high into the ball of your left foot, really claw your hands into the mat, and just pounce it out here, two to three pounces. And then reach for your pelvis and kick the right foot up like the sword of Kali. Draw it in towards the heart and step the right foot through. Come up onto your fingertips. You're welcome to practice your lightest breath pranayama here as we move through our pyramid long stance into our deep, deep, deep lunge. Just to be your exhale. Rock it back. We're only going to do three today. Shift forward. Rock it back. Last one. Shift forward. Rock it back. Pause. Round your back heel, so spin the left toes to face the long side of your mat. So you're kind of in your warrior two stance. You can walk your hands back so the wrists are lined with your shoulders. Drop that right hip away from the rib, lengthen the spine, and then you can fold. You can even hold on to that right foot with your left hand and 
Let the elbow point outwards and pull your forehead towards your shin or knee. Hold it here, breathe deeply. Remember, Kali, not only is she the most terrifying part of, <laughs> or grotesque, I mean, the description, but she, at the root of it all, she is all about love and liberation of the soul, of the self. Slowly release, rebend the front knee, and re leading with your left arm. Circle all the way up into the view of Adrasana, too. Good. Draw your feet strongly towards each other. Tap into that fierce energy, that part of you that has no patience for nonsense. Spin your right palm up and curl it back to the reverse warrior. When I reflect, if you take time to reflect on yourself, you might notice there's a little bit more Kali in you than you realize. <laughs> Slowly pass through your warrior two into parcel konasana, your side angle. You have the option to take it a little bit deeper. I think Kali calls us to go a little bit deeper into those dark parts of the self. To really, really get to get through all that noise, all that nonsense, that facade that we put on for everyone out there. The masks that we wear, she helps us to take that away. One more full breath in. Exhale it out completely. Inhale, come back up to warrior two. Exhale, cart the hands down and slide your right foot back, coming into a plank. You can rest your knees and bring your forearms down. Now you can stay here with the knees down or take the knees off and hold the forearm plank. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Bring your hands into Yoni Mudra. Thumbs connect, index fingers connect. Now take a full breath in, exhale, roll over to the right into that side plank, holding the yoni mudra. Lift the hips up. If this isn't working for you, don't bother with it. Slowly come back through center, roll over to the left. Yoni mudra here, hold it. Lift those hips up. Full breath in, exhale, come back. Lower the pelvis. Release the mudra. Let your head drop. Let the pelvis be heavy, let the belly be loose. Let the leg even be limp. Feel yourself sinking into your mat. And then start to spin the heels to face up towards the sky. Squeeze in front of your thighs. Heavy the pelvis, but pull the navel in and up away from the floor. Press down through your elbows and forearms and guide your elbows to the back of the mat as you pull your heart forward and breathe into the back of the ribs and curl up into Sphinx pose. Draw the chin back, hold it here, breathe. Big breath into the back of the heart. Good burial ground of the heart where all of the negativity burns to ash. Big breath in. Exhale, lengthen as you release. Slide your hands by your ribs. Inhale into Gurujigasana. Exhale, release. Go ahead and press yourself up and back. Downward facing dog, Adho Mudra. Hold it here. Big inhale. Bigger exhale. Go ahead and sweep your left leg up now and bend the knee and roll your left hip over towards your right. Come up super high into ball of the right foot. Keep crawling your hands into the mat and pulse it out here. Couple of pulses. Good. Then re square the pelvis. And kick the left foot up towards the sky. And then bring the left foot through to the top of your mat. Three rounds. Rock it back. That's your inhale. Exhale. Lion's breath, Simhasana. Inhale, rock it back. Exhale, let it go. Tapping into that wild, untamed, raw version of the self. Last one here. Rock it back, ground your back heel. If you took the option to hold on to your foot with the right hand, you can go ahead and do that now. Full breath in and exhale, draw your forehead towards the shin. Watch the shoulders, move away from the ears. Maintain a slight bend to your left knee and pull that hip down away from the left side of the ribs. One more full breath in. Exhale it out, release the bind, rebend your front knee, reach way forward to the front of your mat with your right hand, push down into your left foot and lift up into warrior two. 
Got super, super strong legs, super, super strong arms. Spin your left palm up, reverse the warrior. Inhale through warrior two, exhale into either side angle or the extended version. Inhale your way back up to warrior two. Exhale the hands down, slide your left foot back. Bring the knees down, come on down. Let's go into our side plank again. And you can choose to skip it. So Yoni Mudra, remembering that fierce feminine power, creativity. And go ahead as you're ready, take the knees off, pull into your center, rock on to the right. Maybe float the left leg up this time. Come back through center, walk on to the left. Maybe float the leg, come back through center. Slowly lower the pelvis down, slide your hands alongside the body. Palms are facing down, claw your hands into the mat, tuck your toes. Keep your knees down, bring the legs all the way together. Hover the toes a couple of inches off the mat, separate your heels and push your big toes in towards each other firmly. Pull the navel in and up away from the floor. Inhale, lift the upper body up. Exhale, hold it here. Keep clawing your hands into the mat. Take another full breath into the back of the heart and then float the arms up, the fingertips away. Take the hands behind you and interlace them. Release the index, wrap the left and over the right for your sword. Hold it here. This is where all the darkness resides in the back. We need to shed light on it. Use our sword of truth of discernment. One more breath in. Exhale, release. Take it into Bhujangasana or Sphinx pose on your inhale. Exhale, let it go. Press yourself back into downward dog and maybe take a little bit of a moment in Balasana, child's pose. Remember to be truthful and honor where you are. You can think back at the time where, you know, <laughs> I kind of see I kind of perceive Kali as those instances where you start to grow impatient with someone or even yourself. And you <laughs> you kind of like, we, we, we reference this as we're losing it. But are we really truly losing it? Are we just enough of this person grandstanding or whatever they're doing and we're just gonna cut through it all and just take control of the situation? That is just like Kali. Kali is about, she can see when someone isn't being real, isn't being truthful, she can uh, she can tell. And, and that's what happens with us. We can tell that when somebody is just telling us nonsense, untruths, and we just get frustrated with it. And we want to cut it out and say, listen, I can see what's happening here. You don't need to lie to me or whatever. Just come clean. That's what she's about. Cutting through all that noise and getting to the heart of the matter. What's really going on here? What are you hiding? Take a full breath in. Exhale it out. If you are in child pose, take your arms out in front of you, nice and long, strong, come up onto your fingertips. Take a full breath into the front side and the back of the ribs, similar to our functional forward fold. And on the exhalation, try to keep the rib cage wide and pull the navel in. Okay, ground your hands, pull yourself forward into a tabletop position and then up into downward dog. And then come up high into the balls of your feet, gaze the thumbs and you can jump or step to the top of your mat. When you arrive, slowly either curl up or reverse swan dive up. 
reach it, reach it out, and bring it back into the heart. Okay, go ahead and shift your weight into your left leg, maintain a slight bend to the knee. You can bring your hands to your hips. Bend your right knee, and you're going to take your right hand back to hold onto the inside of your right calf muscle, I mean right ankle. <laughs> Spread the toes and bring your left arm up. Natarajasana. Slightly bend the left knee a little bit more, squeeze the muscles to the bone, pull the knee. Well, in, press your foot into your hand. Hinge from your hips into Natu Rajasana. So I don't remember the story clearly, but Parvati and Shiva, she's a consort of Shiva, and she she said to him, you know, Shiva, what, what do you want from me, to, from, from me today? What can I do for you? And he said, well, she's like, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? All these beautiful, wonderful um, iterations of herself. And he said, you know what? I want you to be Kali. I want you to be, she's like, what? Why would you want me to be Kali? He said, because I want you to be the true, authentic version of yourself. That's what he is all about. So from your dancer's pose, start to hinge even more and reach that left hand down towards the mat. Release the right foot and bring the right hand down as well. Draw your left hip back, lengthen, inhale, exhale into standing splits. Use your left arm to cup the back of your left calf muscle and encourage your forehead closer towards your shin. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Breathe deeply. Big breath in, big breath out. Now bend your left knee and reach your right toes to the back of the mat. Touch them down softly. And then sweep your left leg up and back to three-legged dog. Bend the knee, make a figure eight. So as you bend your left knee, Pull it into the midline, over to the right, and then take it over to the left and bring your shin down for pigeon pose. Pull the toes back on your left foot before you slide your right leg back. Walk the hands back on either side. If you take a full breath in, as you pull the knees towards each other, lift up, big inhale here. Exhale, maintain all that length. Lead with your heart as you lower down onto your forearms. If you like, you can hold your yoni mudra here and perhaps rest your forehead down on it. Connecting to that deep, fierce feminine energy. Kali is all that is. Breathe deeply and fully. Take another full breath in here. Exhale it up completely. Come back up onto your forearms. You're going to bring your left forearm. Now you have the option to go full on into mer person pose, or you can just keep it here more kind of like a Vekasana frog um, um, version. So frog, more frog version is to just take that left forearm on a diagonal just to help you balance. Pull the right heel in and reach back. The elbow will point up and you're lifting that shoulder up, just like you would for Vekasana. If you want to take it further, you can come up here, take the left elbow off. You can hook your elbow around your foot and hug it in if you want to take it further. The choice is yours. But spread the toes of your right foot, keep the shoulders back, and maybe even open up the heart a little bit to the right. Slowly release it. Hmm. Bring the forearms down. We're going to slide back into a forearm plank again, but we're not going to stay there. We're making our way into dolphin pose. Kali turns stuff upside down. She really, really flips you. Walk your feet in. Have a slight bend to the knee. Now, if you want to play with I'm just throwing this out there, but no one has to do forearm stand. <laughs> but if you want to play with, 
Taking one leg up and then the other leg, feel free. But before you do, really claw your hands into the mat and pull your forearms in towards each other. And then press down into the ground and push yourself away so you're not sinking through the shoulders. And squeeze your shoulder base onto the back of the heart. You can pick your left leg up and maybe do a little hop. Pick your right leg up, maybe do a little hop. Play with it, see how that feels. And then when you've had enough, bring your knees down. Walk them back, lower your pelvis, sweep your toes back and pull the heart forward and up for sphinx pose. If you really want to go for it on the second side, you can get closer to your wall. Full breath in here. Exhale, lengthen and release. Slide your hands by your ribs. Press yourself back into downward facing dog. Hold it here for full breath in. Full breath out. Go ahead and make your way to the top of your mat. Turn around. Okay. Keeping an eye on the time. All right, go ahead and shift your weight into your left leg. Right leg. <laughs> and when you're ready, bend the left knee, reach back to hold on to the inside of the ankle and bring your right arm up. Once you have your foot, spread the toes. You can deepen the bend of your right knee, begin to hinge from the hips. So keep thinking about lifting up as you press the foot into the hands, into your Natarajasana version. Stay focused. Slowly start to reach down towards the breath. Whoops. <laughs> Slowly start to reach down to the ground. Release the left hand down. Walk your hands back a little bit here. Cup your calf muscle with the right forearm. Big breath and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Go ahead and bend your right knee and reach your left toes to the back of the mat. Plant your hands, sweep your right leg up and back. Bend the knee, bring it across to the left, through the heart to the right wrist and down. Pull the toes back, your left knee back. Full big breath in and exhale, release. Pause here. There was a time apparently where Kali wasn't so readily received and loved. And I'm guessing it's because of the nature of her, of her being. Um, they probably felt that she was just too, like, for lack of a better word, horrific. But there were all of these um, wise, let's call them, she didn't, Sianda Nin was Rishis, but there were, I guess you can call them like scholars or maybe even wise men, maybe even sages, they started to write more about her and what she represents. And then she became more revered, more loved and more accepted because they realized that even though she may take on this form is for a reason and that she's really truly about the divine self that true, true, authentic self that resides deep within the core of who we are. That's what she's really about. She helps you to find that courage to look. Remember, tantric teachings are all about welcoming home all parts of the self to make yourself whole. And that's what she is about. Okay. Let's get ready to play with our forearms, stand shaking ourselves up and flipping ourselves upside down once more, or maybe not. So, so, oh, sorry, before we get there, I forgot all about our bind. So go ahead now and bend your left knee, pulling the heel to the bum. Choose how you're gonna explore it today. Remember, you can keep your forearm down or you can let that forearm off and take it a little bit further. 
Whichever option you're working with, make sure that shoulder is lifting up away from the ground. This is the left shoulder. And you're drawing the shoulders towards each other. You can spin your heart open. Even if you are upright, you can still spin open and get a little bit of a twist. It'll just be more of an open twist. Good. One more full breath in. Exhale, slowly release it. Forearms down. Go ahead and slide your right leg back. So you can start with the knees down. And get your elbows underneath the shoulders. Claw your hands into the mat. Breathe into. So when you come up into dog, you want to soften the mid upper back. Let the heart melt. But you're still keeping the shoulder blades squeezing onto the back of the ribs. You don't have to take your knees off if you don't want to, but if you're ready to, and if you already have already, then go continue to go for it. Then just pick the knees off. Play with taking one leg up, maybe hopping. See what may happen there. And the leg up, little hops. And then when you're ready, slowly bring your knees down. Walk them back, lower the pelvis, pull the heart through, space pose. Slowly release. Hands by ribs, press yourself up. And come back into Vajrasana. Sit here. We're going to play with camel pose so you can get something for your knees. If you have your block, <laughs> so you can brick and block your block. If you have your block nearby or something thick, you can grab it. If you don't, you can work without it. This is not mandatory. It just helps with the inner thigh connection, but all you need to do if you don't have anything to squeeze into is think about activating your inner thighs. If you do have something nearby, grab it now and tuck your, keep the toes extended for now and the ankles. Squeeze in. Go ahead and take your arms wide. You're going to press down the tops of the feet, squeeze into the block, and you're going to hinge back and reach your arms forward. And come forward again. We'll do this twice more. Big, big, big breath in. Exhale, squeeze. And come forward. Last one. And this time when we hinge back, we're going to bring the palms together and take the arms up. Big breath in. Exhale. Pali sword. Inhale up. And exhale. Inhale up. And exhale. Inhale up, you can tuck the toes. Exhale, spin the arms around. Keep squeezing your block as you lift the ribs up away from the pelvis. Lean back or hinge back, hands to the heels. When you're ready, big breath and lift up. And exhale to release. Sit however you want to sit. This is my choice. You can sit in the same way that works for you. And just bring your hands into Yoni Mudra. Relax the shoulders. Draw your chin back. Slow your breath down. Om, Ayn, Rim, Klim, Chamudaye, Viche, Swaha. And from here, you can make your way into a downward dog or a child's pose, Balasana or Atma Mukha.
Hold it wherever you are. Breathe, breathe deeply. Then make your way onto your back. Coming into constructive rest. We have the option once again to take Yoni Mudra here, really connecting, supporting yourself. Maybe there is a part of you that resonates with Kali a lot. Maybe you feel similarly to how people felt in the beginning that she's too fair, she's too maybe aggressive, because she could be perceived in that way. But that part of you is a way of protecting yourself. Remember, you can use a mantra or call on Kali when you want to protect your energy. And sometimes you do need to be aggressive. Sometimes you do need to be assertive. And it's not because we're being hateful. It's because of love. Love of the self. We're protecting ourselves. We're letting people know what our boundaries are. Think of Kali as your boundary keeper. So if there is a part of you that aligns and resonates with her deeply, but you are fearful of or skeptical of letting her shine through, don't be. She's there for a reason. And acknowledging that will give you the power to control and transform it. Go ahead and separate your knees and walk your feet in to hips distance. So this sequence that we're about to go through is one of my one I've been doing all week because I really I really love it. So just keep your left knee bent in the foot on the floor and bring your right knee to your chest, hold on to the back of your thigh, hug your knee in, and then go ahead and push your right foot up towards the ceiling. Press the hamstring into the hands or push and pull at the same time. When you do that, you may feel the lower back lift off the mat a little bit. You want that. You can circle through the ankle a couple times here in both directions. And then bend your right knee and take the ankle to the top of your left thigh and bring the knees into the chest. You can either wrap your hands around like a big hug or take the hands behind your left thigh. Using your right forearm or elbow to guide your right knee further away. You can stay there or straighten out your left leg. Well, not super straight, keep a slight bend to the knee and reach up to your calf muscle. If for whatever reason this isn't working and your shoulders are like way off the mat, you can get a strap and place it across the ball of your left foot and hug it in that way. I think I've seen my teacher Sienna roll onto her upper back in this shape, but. I mean, you can, you're welcome to try it if you want to, but I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Slowly release, left foot to the ground. And now scoot your bum a little bit over to the right and roll onto the left hip into a twister. So the right knee is pointing up towards the ceiling as the left leg is lying down more so on the mat. And turn your head over to the right. You can use your left hand to guide your right knee more upright, just to open up that lower side a little bit more. And if you are, do so on the exhale, so you take a breath in. And as you're exhaling, gently guide that knee away. And then conversely, take a breath in, and on the exhalation, draw the knee down towards the mat. Mm -hmm. 
your exhalation. You're going to move onto your back once again, stay in the shape. Reset your hips. Press them into your left foot and go ahead and lift your bum off the ground. Slow release. Go ahead and turn sides. Right foot down, left knee into the chest. Hug it in and then stretch it up. Push and pull. Circle through your ankle. Go ahead and cross your ankle on top of your right thigh and try to the chest. Stay there or go ahead and straighten out the right leg. Hold on to the calf muscle. Shoulder blades, you want them on the ground and you do want your shoulders relaxed. So if that's, if that's not happening, let this version go or get your strap. Slowly release, left foot down. You can move it a little bit to the right foot down. You can move it a bit to the left. Switch your hips a little bit to the left and roll onto your right hip. Looking over to the left. Big breath in, big exhale. Start first by guiding the knee further away. Breathe deeply, deep, like let the breath move all the way down into the pubic bone. Just really expand and massage that area of the breath. And then take a breath in. Now the exhalation, guide the knee now down towards the ground. And after your next exhalation, come onto your back once again. Readjust the hips. Plant your right foot. You can think of that right foot as a foot on Makisha's neck. And go ahead and lift your hips up. And then slowly release. Before you move into Shavasana, please choose a symmetrical pose that you love to do. One of the one of the poses associated with Kali is Shirashasana, headstand. Um, well, you know, I'm not really into the headstand thing, but if you wanted, if you thought you wanted to give it a try, you could. Or feel free, you you know, get to a wall, if you want to try the headstand, go for it. Um, no pressure <laughs> at all. You could just choose a happy baby. If you want a cranky baby, then, you know, not cranky in a bad way. <laughs> Think of like a little baby cow, if you will, a little bit fussy. As you pull your knees down, start to move the inner thighs back. So you're gonna think about tilting that, your pelvis forward or the tailbone away from the belly button. And you start to feel that little that lift. And it's a nice stretch. And then you can release it whenever you're ready. And come into Shavasana, remembering that you can choose a different option, seated, lying on your belly or your side, if it's more comfortable for you. So just take a moment to make yourself as comfortable as possible. So allow yourself to go inward. So 
continue to breathe deeply and allow yourself to let go for the next few minutes. Once again, becoming aware of your breath and allowing that awareness to expand the breath to expand through the entire body and even beyond your body to the space that you are in. Beginning to wake yourself up gently, moving, moving fingers or toes, maybe reaching your arms above your head and stretching it out. And making your way up into a comfortable and steady seat, bringing the hands together in your mudra at the lower part of the abdomen. Remember that Kali is there to support and to guide you, to help you come back to the center, to the true, authentic, raw version of yourself, that divine higher self. Even though she may be fierce and grotesque and horrific, she is nothing but fierce, pure love. You are her and she, you is she and she is you. Om Ain Hrim Klim Chamundaye Vijay Nam Swaha. So you used to say Namaha. Go ahead and bring your hands to the heart and heart to me. I'd like to thank you so much for sharing your energy with me this morning and trusting me to guide you through your practice today. Be free, be true, and always be blessed be in your peace. Hello, my little tiger. <laughs> my little Durga tiger. Thank you. You are welcome.